I think, you know, it's very paralyzing specifically for Muslim Americans who happen to be artists when these boundaries are placed on us or when we feel these boundaries are placed on us by quote unquote society. And when we try to operate within those confines, what I have seen for so many artists who, or, or who want to be artists is this almost a sense of a nervous breakdown that they have. Yeah. That my art, I just want to write about like my bike. Can I write a poem about my bike? No, it has to be like Barat bike that goes to like Jannat and it has to be the Islamic, you know, Islamic bike. Individuals have their boundaries, we're human beings. Anyone, anyone who says otherwise is lying to themselves, we're subjective creatures, there's certain things we do, we don't do. Uh, there's certain things I will say and I will not say. And I think you should have faith in that artist to be aware of their own boundaries, you want artists to be aware. Mm -hmm. And also not to be reckless, but you know, being reckless with art is again very subjective. You owe it to yourself to not be asking other people for permission to do what it is, you know, to, to paint or to design this dress or that sort of thing. And, you know, I think if, you, if you're the kind of artist who's, you know, trying to take a poll and see if you should do things one way or the other, then I think that's, that's kind of silly and you need to, like, gain some self-confidence and a bit more of a backbone. And I, I think that's something that a lot of artists end up, you know, gaining through their careers, more of a sense of themselves and more of a backbone and self-confidence. Probably even from the time you were studying to become an artist, it's all about criticism when you're in undergrad mm -hmm. and you're studying anyway. Um, then you move on to be a professional artist and then there's more criticism. And then you just have to say, well, I have my point of view and they have their point of view and everybody has a right to it. You end up having to fulfill the needs of the masses when you're put out there and you're, you're saying, oh, I'm creating something. Suddenly I have to uh, define the Muslim American experience for everyone. And I think that's a dif the difference is that people are naturally projecting themselves upon you um, and also they're judging you. And that's, that's the weird place and time that we're in right now is that, especially in being the first generation, second generation Muslim Americans in this country, I do think that whether or not we realize that people are, um, are judging us whether or not we like to and they're trying to make us fit into a particular place and a particular hole and, um, and a particular ca category. And I think that that can be problematic because if we're constantly trying to define ourselves and, and our work by uh, our identity, and we do it, and we absolutely put our identities into ourselves, into our work, um, I think it can also limit the creative process. Um, so I think we have to get to a point where we can say, I am Sana Amanath and I am writing a book or I am creating a story, and it is a story because it's a beautiful story, it's not just because it represents the entire Muslim American experience. And I don't know if we're there yet, and I don't think we're going to be there for quite some time, which is why we're even having this conversation. So. What, what do you think is the reason for that? Is it because there's so few Muslim Americans in the creative space that the community kind of unfairly places this collective responsibility on you guys to represent all of us, even though that's probably not what you sign up for? Mm -hmm. And do you think that more people coming into that space kind of will alleviate or spread that across, or do you just think it's a product of that you're doing something new? Muslim American culture is, you know, just being, it's, it's a new process, so we're, we're still trying to figure out what that is, but how much of it is just the fact that there's so few people in that space? We are a demographic that is misunderstood um, and also maligned, uh, especially in the public sphere and media, and that's something that we're contending with, and we, it is our responsibility now absolutely to change that image in all sectors, whether it's in the creative fields or not. So yeah, that is a big part of it. The part of it is that there's so few of us out there, so one person does it, and you're like, oh my god, Muslim American superhero, guys, this is a big deal. And for me, it's not a big deal because it's creating a character I could identify with, but it is a big deal because you don't have that image out there. The image out there looks nothing like that Kamala Khan, and that's why it's important, but you know, it's it's just the beginning. We're at we're having that conversation now, but ho hopefully we won't have that conversation in, in 10 years. You know, I mean, even as a black person, then it's like with, Let's say a director, a film director comes out and he puts out a movie and this would be a, con a consistent thing. They'd be like, oh gosh, they always tell the story about this. Oh, they always tell the story about that because it's like once a year, like a movie comes out by a black film director. You know, maybe you'll get two, you know, in a year. So they're like, okay, yes, this has to be my story. Oh, that's not my story. That's like, you know, some story we don't want to hear or something like that. And I think all minorities kind of get that, um, you know, get that pressure when there's not like enough stories out there because, you know, everybody's attached to that story and they want it to be so perfect or whatever.
I always write everything. I always do, I always tell people, I do stuff that is by us for everyone. I write di deliberately for a global multicultural audience because I'm aware of where I am with the privilege of social media and I can access that audience. If you tell a good story, I'm very convinced they will show up. The mainstream will show up for good stories. Put out a good product, mainstream will care. And I'm like, why not tell our stories? We have such richness and wealth in our stories. Why are we so ashamed? And I just want to make a point. I think someone was saying something that, you know, people are shocked. Like, oh, like, how come you didn't, how come you went to Marvel and said to do Miss Marvel? Weren't they like shocked? Why should they be shocked? Like Muslims and I think South Asian, I'm speaking from South Asian perspective, we have such richness in our tales, but because we're marginalized, because we don't see ourselves, we often think that we are the Sepai. We're often Haji Baba. We're often <laughs> Sulu. We're often Johnny Quest. Why would they care about Bhangra? Why would they care about Biryani? Someone South Asian or Arab would be like, hey, Majad, Psst. what do they think of the play? <laughs> And I'm like, what do you mean by they? I'm like, you were in an audience of they, they really liked the play, you know, psha, they, what do they think? <laughs> which is, d d like, let's translate that, mainstream, which is, what do white people think? White people think. Yeah. <laughs> and there's that self-loathing, that sense of humiliation, that sense of lack of pride in our culture, and that sincere shock, that sincere shock that, oh my God, they can dig hijab, even if they're not hijabi, they can dig mipsters. They can dig a character who happens to be Muslim. How is that humanly possible that they can dig us as protagonists of an American narrative?